How far down can you see? Um, I'm trying not to slouch because it makes me look fat. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Am I okay with that? I tend to slouch, so I'm going to yeah. try and yeah. keep myself up. Yeah, right Got here? Okay. My name is Laura Correa, and I'm a senior police officer with Austin Police Department. I'm a victim witness counselor with the Austin Police Department. I'm a native Texan, born and bred. <laughs> I grew up in a small town in the panhandle of Texas. It was a small farming community. I obviously played ball, uh, meaning football, because when somebody says playing ball in Texas, it's always going to be football. It's not going to be baseball, it's not going to be hockey, it's not going to be softball, or it's football. That's what we do. Sports were my thing. I love sports. I love playing soccer. That's my first love. I've played since I was six years old. Um, student government, clubs, uh, band, football. I was president of the Asian club. Both my sisters were uh, cheerleaders, straight A students. I was nowhere near a straight A student and um, definitely was not a cheerleader. Um, I wasn't really a part of a lot of groups. I got into a lot of fights in junior high. I started having uh, crushes on girls, and it kind of came to me that they're all interested in boys, and I'm not really that gung-ho about it. I didn't want to be the damsel in distress being protected. I wanted to protect the damsel in distress. I knew I was different, but I didn't feel like there was anything wrong with me. Well, I was a quiet guy. I was a little different. Uh, I wasn't the same as the other boys. I remember having a, a dream where I kissed a girl, a, a popular girl in my class, and growing up in Texas, I thought, well, that's not normal. And I remember holding hands with one guy, and I thought, this just doesn't feel right. This is, you know, guys, this is just doesn't feel right. When I, when I came out to my mother, I decided the best way to do it was through text message. I could not tell her face to face, or unfortunately, I couldn't even call her and tell her. I found that it was so much easier in society just to follow the norms and do what was expected. I didn't want to call myself gay because gay meant you're broken, you're not right. Oh, okay, I'm only doing it Saturday. Everything will be fine come Monday and so on and so forth. But I never wanted to say that I was gay. Growing up in a Mexican Catholic household, you didn't tell your mother you were gay. So there's no way they'll, they'll ever hire me if they know I'm gay. Most of my life up to that point had been trying to hide the fact that I was gay. I remember her crying and saying, you know, we can get help for this. It's very biblically wrong, and I don't want to see you go to hell. But I, I respect. I recently came out to my family. It was July 1st. It happened to be my birthday. She just got really quiet. She looked really angry. And she was just like, until you decide that you're straight, I don't want to hear from you. For me to try to convince her that that is not the outcome that I believe happens or will happen for me, I can't. That's her story. And this is mine. Sorry. <laughs> One of the things that I really have always valued as uh, an immigrant myself and somebody that uh, remembers not speaking a word of English and some of the discomfort of being that one person that uh, may be a little different uh, because of the inability to communicate as a young child. Um, I've always valued diversity. Whether it's black or white, straight or gay, man or woman, young or old, it doesn't matter. No matter who you are, we've created a safe environment for our employees and our number one goal is to create a safe environment for you. Our doors are open, they're welcoming, and we will be here to embrace you no matter who you are, where you come from, or what your background is. My name is Art Acevedo. I'm the chief of police here in Austin, Texas, and believe me, it does get better. I heard my own voice in my head say, I'm a lesbian, and then I said it out loud, I'm a lesbian. But I had such a rush of emotion when I 
finally said that out loud. I couldn't even stand. I was tired of lying. Um, I didn't like it, so it was time to change that and just be honest about who I was. And this is who I am. And, you know, I can't change. You know what? They don't get to tell me who I am or what I get to do. You're not an abomination. You are what God created. If you check out, you'll miss it all. And we don't get to experience what it is that you've brought here that nobody else can. Think of the things that are left in your life that can be done. You know, having that first love, uh, having that second love, because, yeah, that's probably going to happen, <laughs> at least. Not everybody has to like you. They just can't take away your right and your ability to be who you are. So keep at it. It gets better. Show them what you're made of. Show them that in this day and age, you don't have to be afraid of who you are. Look at the big picture. Just keep persevering. Uh, you've, you've got to stay strong. The bullies have to be accountable for their bad behavior. We're there to protect you. We're there to help you. You're in this special club, and you've got this exclusive membership, and they can't take that away from you. Oh, yes, it, it got better. I know it doesn't feel like it sometimes, but it got so much better. La vida va mejorar. It did get better for me. I'm one of the faces of Texas, and I'm a lesbian. I'm a native Texan, and very proud of that. <laughs> right here, this is one of the faces of Texas. Me. I represent Texas. And it's going to get better, because Texas says it's going to get better. Todo va a estar bien. It's fabulous. A better word is there than fabulous.